Hi, this is Joe, and thanks for coming back for another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a carbon fiber license plate holder uh, inexpensively. And we're going to start out here. I'm going to go through all the ingredients that you need to pick up. I'm also going to list the ingredients in the description of this video. So what we have here is a flat surface. It can be either a smooth piece of wood or in my case I have a piece of uh, sheet aluminum. Uh, you need a license plate frame and I have a slightly wider one here because you want some wide a wide frame so you can actually see the uh, cosmetic uh, effects of the carbon. You need some fiberglass cloth. You need some fiberglass mat. You need some plastic drop cloth. You need some uh, color, in this case black. We're going to mix in with our resin so the resin will appear black. Uh, you don't want any bleed through. Carbon, of course, is uh, black. And a carbon is very expensive. So what we're going to be doing is using one ply of carbon and the rest of the plies in fiberglass. So the black color coloring is to help uh, prevent any bleed through from the uh, from the white uh, fiberglass which uh, when you wet it out with resin starts to look a bit translucent you're also going to need some epoxy uh, epoxy of, is one of your most expensive items to purchase and the carbon fiber is going to be one of the most expensive items so by using a combination of carbon fiber and fiberglass we're going to try to keep the costs down to uh, a minimum so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to show you uh, how we're going to do this and then uh, you can do this on your own at home the first thing you want to do is cut yourself some plastic drop cloth and cover your flat surface the reason why we're using the plastic drop cloth is that epoxy does not stick to polyethylene and polyethylene is the material that plastic drop cloth is made of. I'm using plastic drop cloth so we don't have to use an expensive mold release. Uh, you can use inexpensive mold release but it takes a lot of time. You have to wax your surface, you have to use a, a, com a combination of several mold releases to get a good release. So to make this inexpensive and quick, we're just going to take a piece of plastic drop cloth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut some fiberglass and carbon slightly larger than our license plate frame. We want a little bit of an overhang on all sides. And so we're going to go cut those pieces of fiberglass and I'm going to show you how we're going to lay them up uh, in the order or sequence that we need to laminate them onto our, plast onto our plastic sheet surface here. The reason why we're going to use several plies of fiberglass and one ply of carbon is that carbon by itself on one ply, here's a piece of carbon, is sort of flexible. So what we want is uh, we want something a little bit more rigid for our license plate frame. Now the license plate frame is going to be cosmetic so it doesn't need to be structurally strong but it does need to be rigid so when you mount your license plate frame to your vehicle it's going to be strong enough to support that license plate frame. So as you see one ply of carbon laminated is very flexible so we have to use extra plies of fiberglass in order to build up a thickness so our license plate frame will be rigid. We have cut five plies of fiberglass slightly larger than the license plate holder. Let me show you what we have here. We have two plies on the bottom of very fine weave fiberglass followed by two plies of fiberglass mat commonly referred to as chop strand mat and then we have one ply of finely woven fiberglass that will go on the top. This is to print, prevent any bleed through of the coarse strands from the chop strand mat. Then we have a piece of carbon fiber 
and carbon fiber to maintain the beauty of it you don't want any of your weave twisted so before you lay down that you want to make sure that your weave goes woof and warp you want to make sure all these strands are straight okay so we're going to start mixing up some resin and we're going to start laminating one ply at a time now when you put the resin on you don't have to put the resin on all of the glass and carbon because again we're going to take the license plate frame and we're going to cut out the center and around the outside so again resin is one of your most expensive items so we only want to wet out the portion and a little bit wider on the outside and on the inside of the pieces so we won't waste our resin now fiberglass and carbon fiber being it's just woven pieces or woven strands of fiber have a tendency to unravel really easy so you have to be very careful when you're handling this you might want to also take a pair of scissors and cut off some of the loose hanging strands otherwise it will unravel on you or the strands will get back onto your glass or carbon and not make it as pretty as it could be so be very careful and try to cut some of the loose strands away without disturbing the weave of the glass or the carbon some more items that you're going to need is a gram scale some stir sticks and I like to use round bottom paper bowls if you use a square bottom the resin may get caught in the sharp edges and not mix properly so I always like to use the round bottom bowls and make sure your bowls are not wax coated because if the wax gets into the resin it will not cure properly another thing you're going to need is some inexpensive brushes and I'll show you how we're going to use these brush brushes it's a process called stippling and when we put the fabric down and start applying the reg resin we dab the brush and spread out the resin this is a process called stippling how we mix the resin is we mix equal amounts this particular resin system is a one-to-one -one ratio so we mix equal portions of each resin we stir it very well together and then what we do is we add the color to turn the resin black again this helps hide and prevent any bleed through between the glass and the carbon fiber the working pot life of this resin is 45 minutes which should give you enough to lay up all five plies uh, but what you want to do is you want to only mix up enough resin for one ply at a time that gives you extra working time so we're going to mix up probably um, an ounce of resin or two ounces of resin which is about 70 grams so that would be half of each part a and part b uh, so let's go ahead and start mixing the first batch and then we'll apply the first ply of the fine woven uh, fiberglass keep your license plate frame handy because you're going to hold this above where you're wetting out the fiberglass and carbon fiber to make sure you get enough overlap to cover the frame so keep this handy because you're going to use this as a visual guide make sure you wear niatril or latex gloves epoxy systems can be uh, uh, fairly toxic and some people can have very adverse reactions and uh, the toxicity can build up in your skin over time so make sure you protect your hands this particular resin system doesn't stink too terribly bad but still work in a fairly um, uh, well ventilated environment so first of all we're going to take 
the part A and we're going to add 30 grams to the cup using the gram scale. There's 30 grams of part A. Now we're going to put another 30 of part B. Notice part B is a bit thicker. Now epoxy resin has to be mixed exactly. Same ratio. It's not like polyester resin where the more hardener you add the quicker it cures. So don't do that with epoxy resin system. It has to be, have a very precise measurement. So 30 grams part A, 30 grams part B. This particular resin is a one to one ratio. So we now have 60 grams of resin. We can now get our mixing stick and we want to mix the resin very thoroughly. You always want to get into the corners. That's why we're using the round bottom cup here or bowl. You can look at the resin and you can see how it starts to mix together but you really want to mix this well if you don't mix it well it won't cure properly and you'll you'll ruin your layup tap your mixing stick get all the resin off of it now we can set it aside momentarily after your res resin is fully mixed you can then add your coloring and then mix it some more you don't need a lot this stuff is really concentrated. We're going to be using the black dye only on the fiberglass plies. When we get to the carbon fiber, we're going to use a clear resin. notice there's some air bubbles in the resin system some of them will pop when we get ready to put the final ply on we're going to use a heat gun on top of the surface and that will burst the rest of the bubbles you don't want any bubbles in your final clear coat or else you'll get pinholes in your resin and the and when you go to spray the clear coat on uh, it's not going to look very nice So now that we're mixed, we're going to use our license plate as a template to where we're going to put the resin. Spread out your plastic really thin and you want your first coat of resin down on the, the plastic sheet.
this resin is pretty thick so you're going to have to be very careful to spread it th uh, thin a laminating resin is usually a little thinner the reason why i'm putting down resin across the entire surface is i want the pl the bottom ply to stay in place uh, I don't want it moving around so that's why I'm putting all the resin down across the entire surface and then we can compare to make sure we get enough and you always want a little extra around all the sides to keep your plastic as smooth as possible. Notice we have a pretty good overlap now. We can get our first ply. And we can apply the first ply. Get your brush and this is where you're going to start stippling. You're basically just going to tap the brush gently to let the fabric soak up the resin. You really want to make sure there are no dry spots on the glass ply. Again, we want to take our license plate frame. We want to make sure we have enough coverage all the way around. Now we can take the second ply of the fine woven glass Make sure you get your little strands away from the center that you're working on with the glass. Now you notice on the second ply, we're going to have to start applying some more resin because it's a little dry. Again, you want to make sure you really wet out the glass ply. If you get any strands on your brush, make sure you remove those.
actually it's not taking that much resin to coat the entire surface of the glass so I'm going to go ahead and do that now we have two plies of the finely woven fiberglass down let's go ahead and put one of the layers of chop strand mat on top of those of these two plies This is a much coarser ply and will add some thickness and rigidity to your final license plate holder. You also notice that it gets a little messy. So just work around that. That's why we have the top ply of woven glass to put over the chop strand because it does get a bit messy. Normally with a thinner resin system, it won't uh, fray so bad. When the resin is thinned out on the ply of fiberglass, it takes longer to cure. When it's in the bowl, thick, much more thicker, it will cure faster. That's why you want to get the resin spread out as thin as you can. Always double check your coverage. We can now take our final ply of chop strand mat and we're going to have to mix up some more resin Since the bottom three plies are black already, we can just mix up some clear resin now. So let's go ahead and mix up some more resin. 